there's no need to get tense. Relax, reflex, condense. Subscribe, baby, subscribe. In the 1950s, 60s, and 70s, companies like Heathkit, Dynakit, and others specialized in offering high-quality audio components as unbuilt kits. Consumers could purchase and build these kits to save a little money, but mostly they did it because they not only had a love for stereo music, but also for tinkering with electronics. That pretty much describes me, so finding some vintage kits to build was a no-brainer. And while they're somewhat rare, vintage unbuilt kits can still be found. Be warned, though, that unbuilt kits can cost more than for the same device that's already been built. That may sound silly to some, but for me, having the opportunity to build an antique kit is a thrill and a privilege that's well worth it. There are some real benefits to buying unbuilt kits, though. For one, it's tough to find vintage gear that's in mint condition. No matter how well taken care of, most will have scratches and other signs of wear. Once built, though, a vintage unbuilt kit is likely to look brand new. And since most old components are likely to need some servicing, I often find that building a vintage kit is easier than restoring one that's already built. For one, I don't have to worry about fixing other people's mistakes. And secondly, I can test each capacitor, resistor, diode, etc. and replace as necessary before installing each component. Once the kit is built, it usually works perfectly and I don't have to diagnose problems. Some may think vintage unbuilt kits should stay unbuilt and be tucked away safely for posterity. That's fine, I guess, but not for me. I want to enjoy building and using them. If you're handy with electronics and don't want to pay a premium for an unbuilt kit, there are a number of reasons already built Heathkit or Dynaco components may be a great option for your vintage system. First, these components were designed to be user serviceable, so they can sometimes be easier to work on than mass-produced equipment. Second, the original manuals with instructions and circuit descriptions, diagnostic advice, schematics, and part lists are readily available on the internet. Finding a service manual for a mass-produced product can be more difficult or costly. Third, Heathkit and Dynaco tended to use generic components, so finding replacements can be easier than with mass-produced equipment, which may use proprietary parts. And fourth, there's a vast community of Heathkit and Dynaco enthusiasts online, so helpful user groups and sites that offer parts and upgrades are plentiful. Now for the bad news. As I said, I prefer unbuilt kits. That's because an already built kit was likely assembled by an average enthusiast with average skills. Usually, that's good enough. But I do occasionally see kits with some sloppy soldering that could potentially cause a short or broken connection. And I've also come across less than ideal wire routing, which can sometimes contribute to unwanted noise. The good news, though, is that I've never purchased an already built kit that was terribly constructed. They're out there, though, so buyer beware. As with any eBay purchase, carefully read the description and examine the photos before placing your bid. This goes for unbuilt kits, too. Make sure all the necessary parts are included. So, now that you know why I want to build a vintage component stereo system made mostly from kits, let me ask you this. Do you know what a component stereo is? To many of you, that probably seems like a ridiculous question, and you're thinking, duh, of course I do. Who doesn't? Well, I'm betting there are plenty of people, especially younger ones, who are interested in getting into vintage audio, but who have no idea what a preamp, integrated amp, or tuner are. So, before we start building our system, let's review the names and functions of the equipment typically found in a component stereo system. If you already know all that, hang in there, as I'll include some interesting info for you as well. It all happens in the next video in this series. To stay updated, please subscribe and click the bell. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I'll see you soon.